Welcome to Riverside Bible Church, Wednesday night service. Glad that you're tuning in from wherever you might be. Happy Thanksgiving. Let me say that to you right off the bat so I don't forget later. I uh, hope you'll have a great time with your family and friends tomorrow. And I hope it's a great day and a uh, blessed day for you as well as it is for everyone here. Hope you have that as well. If you have no place to go, our home is always open. You can always come and grab some turkey and fixings and, and fellowship at our house. We'd be glad to have you, so stop in from wherever you might be. If you want to travel from Arkansas or Tennessee or wherever, come through dinner tomorrow, it's fine with us. We'll take you. And we'll take any of you as well. All right. Let's get into service then. Let's uh, take our Bibles and turn to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. I don't really like to use the phrase uh, Thanksgiving season. Uh, and I'm going to give you some things tonight to hopefully help us to remember to be thankful um, more often because it, it honestly is a daily, it, it's, just, it's just part of the daily walk. Just thanking God for things, and we're going to talk about that tonight, so I'll, I'll try not to get ahead of myself. Psalm 100, let's read this whole song together. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come, and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. And uh, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And so I'm just kind of titled it tonight, For the Lord is Good. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 says this, And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. And the psalmist here tells us, for the Lord is good. I want, I want to thank God. I want to thank God in, in, in everything that I do. And, and I'm going to give you some uh, four things that we can thank God uh, with tonight. But I'm glad that God is there to take care of us and to meet our needs and to help us when we need help the most. Well, there's so many, listen, there's not a single person that could not look back and say, man, has God been good to me. Now, the world may not have been so good to me. My job might have not been that good to me. By the way, congratulations to Tori. He officially retired today. Amen? Let's give him a hand. That's quite an accomplishment. How long, Tori? How many years you put in? Well, you know, it's been 25 and a half for this company. But I've been in the workplace. And the real job I started at 20 was 19, so. Yeah, well, congratulations. Uh, that's a, a long time coming. And uh, but congratulations to you. The Lord have been good, give you good jobs and a good yeah. place and give you uh, the opportunity to serve him in, in the capacity that you've been serving him all these years. Uh, and it's more than a job. So Christian, your job is more than a job. It's, it's a mission field. It's an opportunity to be a witness for the Lord as the Lord gives us opportunity. So, in order for us to thank God, whether we, uh, with our word, when we speak, when we speak to others, how we minister to others, how we, listen, every day, if we'll take the time to look around who's around us, the Lord will give you opportunity to say something good to somebody. 
You can, it, it, maybe it's a smile, maybe it's hello, how you doing? Hey, you can go in front of me at the line, what, whatever it is, open the door for somebody. They're all around us every single day, and we have opportunity with our words to, to, to show our praise and thanks to God for being who we are. Opportunity to, to help someone else. So whether I do it in word or whether I do it in deed, I need to do it for the glory of God. That's got to be my motive for living. That's got to be my motive. Every day when I get up, I live for the glory of God. If I don't, I, 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 there's things I won't do. If I'm just living for my glory, maybe I won't the glory today, so I just don't live the way I feel. If I'm living for someone else or, or some other thing, listen, it just is not going to work out unless I'm giving my life to the glory of God. It changes your attitude about the day. Things go up, go down, go in, go out, go right, go wrong every single day. There's always something happening, something moving. You know, you ever wonder why when you go to pick something up, you drop it? Why? Why do I have to drop it? I'm right here. I'm holding it, you know. There's always something happening. But listen, whether it's up or down or in or out or good or bad, it's all for the glory of God. And so we give God the praise, we give God the thanks, which I don't think we do that enough. I don't think we just take time to, Carol's going to sing a wonderful song come Sunday, and I won't give it away, but we just simply need to be quiet and just thank God. Things are so busy, things are so complicated, things get so messy. All right. I want to thank God, first of all, in everything. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says this. In everything. What do you think that means when the Bible says in everything? Brenda's <laughs> laughing. Do you think that means everything? No matter what. No matter what. In everything, give thanks. For this, listen, if people want to know what the will of God is, it tells you flat out right here, doesn't it? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That means when times are good, I give thanks. And when times are rough, I give thanks. I'm glad when it's I'm, I'm glad when it's rough. I've got someone to count on. I'm glad that I got someone to turn to because listen, it's going to get rough at times. God is good all the time. Say that with me. God is good all the time. All the time. We, we say that all the time. We hear people say that all the time. Is it true? Do we believe it to be true? It really is. Listen, my circumstances are not going to dictate to me how whether God is good or not good. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Not because my circumstances change, not because it's up today, or down today, or in today, or out today. It's, none of that has to do with God being good. Can God take my ups and bless me? Can he take my downs and bless me? Can he take my ins and outs and bless me? Then God's good all the time. Because I face those things all the time. It's you're, you're going up, down, in, or out all the time. So I, I'm not going to let my circumstances dictate that. Thank him in everything. I think it was, was it in everything? Yeah, I got four here. I'm going to mess them up. Thank him in everything. His goodness and his greatness. Thank him for being the almighty God. We want to complain when the, when the rough times come. Where is God? What happened? Why did you leave me out here for this to happen? Why did that have to happen? How come this has to come along now? Why does that have to take place? The Lord says, you trust me? You trust me that I'm looking out for you? Anybody know who E.B. Hill is? E.B. Hill 
as a, a, a black preacher, and he's a good preacher, he's passed on now, but when his wife passed away, he preached his wife's funeral. You should go on to YouTube sometime and look it up. E.B. Hill preaching his wife's funeral. And you should listen to that. It is a wonderful message to listen to. But here's what he comes to. He said, he was saying, Lord, he, and he went and he prayed when he found out his wife was, was sick and, and could die. He went and said, Lord, save her. Keep her here. Let her stay. And he said he had convinced himself that God was going to heal her and that she was going to stay, but she died. And here's what he said. Do you trust me, Hill? He said, do you trust me? Because you think you know what was best for your wife? Oh, if you could see her now, you must trust me. You keep living and doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you trust your wife in the blindness. You trust the care that I give. You believe that there's something greater on the other side, and there is. Oh, if you could just see her now, you would know that it's all good. That's really what it is, isn't it? We want to take charge of things. We don't want to turn it over to God and let him trust him. It's, it, why has this come up in my life? I don't know, but I want to trust him. I remember one year at the end of the lawn season. It, I mean, right at the end, it was like I had just taken the equipment off the trailer. I had parked the trailer on the road uh, when we lived in Mishawaka. And the next morning, I got up, back down the drive, and I went, something's missing. Yeah, my trailer was gone. Somebody stole my trailer on the last night. And I was like, oh. And Carol and I were like, why would someone, why would the Lord let something like this happen at this point, in this juncture? Well, we've been through a few things in our lives, and we've made it. And so we said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, Lord, what are you teaching me? What do I need to see? What was I? I don't want to miss something here. If there's something that needs to come about and needs to happen for me to see something, to be a better servant of yours, or to do something better, or whatever it is, God, let our eyes and ears be open, let our hearts be open, and then show us what you want us to do. And I said, show us what, what we need to see in all of this. Well, as the winter went along, we started talking about how we're going to replace that trailer. And so we started uh, looking at the cost of trailers and trying to find a, a good buy, especially you get a better buy in the winter than you will come spring when everybody needs a trailer. And so we were, we were doing all that and we were saying, you know, I wonder, what are we going to do? We just were not prepared to fork out money for a new trailer. And uh, so... Uh, the phone rings. You know, let, you know that story. I, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't always happen this way, folks, but there's times it does happen this way. So don't just expect that, you know, if you lose 10 bucks, you're going to get 100 back. But, you know, it does happen that way sometimes. So, anyways, the phone rings. I pick up the phone, and, and it was someone who knew us and said, um, You got a trailer yet? And I said, No, no. Uh, we're, we're shopping, we're looking around. Uh, you know, trying to get pricey. And this person says, well, the Lord told me to give you $3,500 to go get a trailer. I was just like, what? What? Yep, yeah, that's what the Lord told me to do. So I'll be bringing the money over tomorrow. I just want to let you know, and then you can go shopping. Yeah, well, that trailer, and we're, we're getting ready to retire, and that trailer is sitting in the driveway, we just we just finished up our 12th year of the lawn business. And listen, so yeah, I can say I can I can complain to God about losing my trailer. I don't know what that was all about. I don't know why I had to lose a trailer to get a trailer. Maybe God was working on someone else. 
to do something he wanted them to do. And then he had to put me in a place in order to be in a position that they could do that. I don't know, do you believe in that kind of stuff? I mean, I do. It happens too much. I, 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 I believe in that kind of stuff. Sometimes, when I pray every day and I say, Lord, help me help somebody today. Do you know sometimes somebody helps me and that's me helping them? Because I was in a situation that somebody had to help me. That's what God wanted them to do was help me help in some way. And if I wasn't in that position, then he couldn't have helped me, which in turn let me help him. Does that make sense? That I just run around the block and, and didn't make any sense at all. Sometimes I do. No, I think that's the way it works. I think that's the way it happens many times. So, no matter what I'm, where I'm at in my life, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, Six months ago, roughly, around Carol's birthday back in June, Carol was diagnosed with the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. So she's had testing since then, and, and we just recently had some, uh, uh, some new testing that came out that she had done. And last Thursday, actually, we went to the doctor, and he set us down to talk to us about the results of this new testing. Twenty years ago, Carol was diagnosed with cancer. So we went through about a cancer, uh, breast cancer, uh, in 2001, and then uh, it was all gone, and, and she got a clean bill of health for three years, and then it came back and uh, and and covered up a lot more area than, than the first one, and so ended up with a double mastectomy and all of that that goes along with that. And, and uh, so, but it's been 18 years uh, since Carol had cancer. She's been cancer-free for 18 years. Uh, that's a praise to the Lord, amen? amen. Uh, that that did raise its ugly head and come back. So then when we were met with this Alzheimer's, we, we, were, we were, to say the least, uh, you know, it takes, it's like a punch in the gut. When you get news like that, it's just like a punch in the gut. It just sort of takes your wind out of your sail. So we just pray, you know, I mean, what can you do? You just, you try, we try to research it, find out the most information about it. Everybody had ideas for us, whether it was uh, essential oils or a, a certain diet or, or a certain way of uh, exercise or all kinds of stuff. And we have to take all of that and we have to pray about all of that and ask God, what's the, what's the best for us? What is the action that you want us to take? And so we pray and we pray. Well, I probably may have prayed a little different than Carol. I, I prayed a little more selfishly that, that Carol would, would stay. Our, our plans have been to spend, you know, spend my life with my best friend and, and the greatest person in all the world for me. It's been with Carol. And so that's that that's been my prayer, and God knows my heart, and, and I, I just I'll, I'll accept whatever God brings, you know, because whatever he's teaching us in all of this, what, what did we need to see in this? And what did we need to go through uh, to get in this news? And maybe we'll help somebody else. She's helped so many people in, in the breast cancer uh, world uh, because of what she's been through. And maybe there's something else. I don't know. Maybe it's a doctor. Maybe it's a nurse. Maybe it's a just, just maybe, uh, who knows? I just want to be faithful and I just want to trust God. Okay. So we go in to see the doctor, and the doctor comes in, and he sits down, and he says, I'm going to change Carol's diagnosis. And he said that I'm almost 100% positive that Carol does not have Alzheimer's. What? No. The testing that we've given her 
she scored so high in the Alzheimer's part of it that it really focused in on where her problems are, and here it is, and these are treatable. Man, isn't that just like the best news you could get? But look, I, why? Why get that news in June and then change the news in November? I don't know. I don't know what that was. I don't, were we gonna, was it a test for us to stay true to him? Was it a test to us to stay true to one another? I don't know what God is doing in our lives, but I simply must trust him, good or bad. Amen. So she had attention deficit disorder and insomnia, and she's had both of these most of her life. You put those two together, they're a pillow. If you can't sleep and you can't focus, it'll take your life. And so that's where her confusion was coming from. That's where all these things come from. And so they were, they're going to give her medicine for ADD. She's already on medicine for insomnia and it takes time uh, because she's been this way most of her life. The chemo brain from chemo that she's taken before it is part of it as well. And these things will get better. They're not a cure-all, but they will get better. Praise God. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord for his mighty hand that he can do all things. We, we can't just talk about it, folks. We have to believe it. And we have to live it. Gary's facing, he don't know what he's facing. But he's about to find out here in a couple days. In another week, and you have this test, right? Uh, you get all that straight, we're going to put you to sleep. No? Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay, so you pray for him because he's got to be awake through this process and uh, doesn't sound very exciting. But listen, Gary doesn't know what God has on the other side of this for him. But he's going to find out. And whatever it is, he's still got to trust. If they say it's spread or if it's not spread, whatever it is, do you trust me? If it's good news, if it's bad news, does it change me? I'm still God. There isn't anything I cannot do. Do you believe that I can do it? That's where the problem lies. Jesus could not do many miracles in his hometown because they didn't believe. He's not the Messiah. He's Joseph's boy. They couldn't believe he was the son of God. Therefore, he couldn't do many miracles there. Listen, he cannot do certain things in our lives unless we believe he can. Amen. He can do anything, but i got to believe it. Right. So this Thanksgiving, when we're thanking God for things, thank him in everything. Word or deed, whatever it is, give God the glory and thank him for being God. Number two, thank him for everything. Ephesians 5.20 says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if we never had any valleys, we would never appreciate getting to the mountaintop. Thank God for the trial that makes me strong. Because isn't it in my weakness that he's strong? It's not in my strength. It's in my weakness. He's my strength. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So in my trial that I face in my life that's made me strong, I thank God for it. I didn't say I liked it. I didn't say I enjoyed it. I didn't say I want another one. But I say what I have learned to be strong in the Lord. I thank God for the trial that made me that way. Listen, I don't want to just be wandering around in this Christian life in some kind of crazy world. I want to be learning and growing and doing that I might be stronger the 
next time something comes along. I might recognize the trial better the next time and trust God even sooner and more. Thank God for the difficulties that taught me to trust Him. I don't know about you, but Carol and I have been in places in our lives where we had to totally, 100% trust God. And, and listen, things are better in our lives today, but every once in a while, we get together and we sit down and we talk and we say, hey, let's not forget what it was like when we had to 100% totally depend on God. Let's don't get too far ahead. I don't want to forget that. If, we, if something was going to happen, God was going to do it. If something was going to come, God was going to do it. If something was going to work out, God was going to do it. And we had no other means of having it work out. And we had to just say, Lord, you know, this whole lawn business thing, man, why? I'm going to write a book on this one of these days, Lord willing, that you, we, we went out, we started out, we, we made up flyers, we, we almost had to borrow the money to go get the flyers made, and then we walked through the neighborhood, because we didn't have any way of getting from house to house, like, I didn't have no trailer, I didn't have no zero-turn tractor, I didn't have no backpack blower, no good weed eater, I didn't have any of that stuff. All I had was a pickup truck and my lawn equipment for a home. I had a Sears uh, Craftsman mower, tractor and I had a Walmart weed eater curved on the end and I had a Walmart blower that you had to plug it in somewhere. Woo -woo -woo -woo. <laughs> Blew like 10 miles an hour. That's the way we started. So we walked through the neighborhood and we passed out these flyers. I didn't know how to quote somebody's yard. So we just went through there and we said, this is what we, we can cut this for, we can cut this for. And we wrote it right on the flyer, rolled it up, stuck it at their door, and we went out and passed out on them. 200, 300, I, I, I don't know what it was. So then, you know what we did? We went home, we took the telephone, not cell phone, we didn't have a cell phone then. We took the telephone that was cordless, we took it off, and we set it in the middle of the kitchen table, just like that. And we sat at the kitchen table, and we went, okay. Well, we don't know what else to do. Here we are. Bring phone ring. Hello? This is JR Lawn Service? Yes, it is. You can really cut my yard for $25. I go, uh oh, I guess I goofed on that one. <laughs> and I go, well, sure. And they go, well, you got the job. So I said, all right, I'll be right there, Joe. So, Got in my Sears Craftsman mower, and I drove it. I didn't have a way to get to their house. I drove it to the house, parked it, took the key out, walked back home, put everything else in the bed of my pickup truck, and drove my pickup truck up there, parked behind my mower, got out, mowed the grass, drove the tractor back to the house, went back out my truck, drove it back to the house, put the phone on the table. All right, everyone. That's exactly the way it started. Totally depending upon God to move. Before long, we were doing about 20 in the neighborhood, and they all knew that little fat man that lived there on Clare Lane was getting skinnier all the time with all this walking he was doing. <laughs> and, right, and they'd see me coming home and, and uh, it getting dark on that tractor, heading down the road. They knew where he was headed. I even told them, look, you want to know what your lawn's going to look like? Drive down to Claire Lane and I gave the address and I said, look at my lawn because that's the way your lawn looks. And so some, some of them did. Some of them come back and we got this. So it started like that and it just began to click as a roll from that. Listen, we had to totally depend upon God. I got a set of ramps. Started running my tractor in the back of the bed of the truck with these ramps until I was going up in the ramp one day and I hit the ramp too hard and it flew up and threw me off the back and the tractor went off the side. Oh, it was horrible. I was out of business too. They all come running out thought I killed myself. <laughs> so we said, Lord, we, I can't, I, you know, Carol's like, you're going to kill yourself doing this. I can't even watch you load the tractor. We said, trust the Lord, we got a truck. We got a truck. I said, how much money we got? 
So we would see this. We got a, well, we got about 600 folks. All right. On our way to church one day, pouring down rain. We're driving down over here by Memorial, by uh, uh, Central High School. We're driving down the road. We're coming to church. And I'm like, Arr! I looked at Carol. She looked at me. I said, did you see what I just saw? She said, yep. We backed up. Trailer for sale. Uh, we pulled in. Yeah. Anyone want to take this home to the trailer car? That's all we had. I didn't even have a hitch on my truck to take it home. The guy drove it out to Middlebury for me and dropped it in my driveway. And on Monday, I went and got a hitch put on the truck so that I could haul the trailer. I never drove a trailer around. So anyway, listen, this, this is what it's like when you totally depend upon God. You believe you're doing what God wants you to do, then you just trust God for everything else. Are we thanking Him and trusting Him Listen, when the, when the trials make me strong and when the difficulties teach me to trust, listen, it took Elijah three and a half years to go to Mount Carmel. He didn't just wake up one morning and say, yeah, it's sunny day, I got to take on the prophets in the groves today. No, no. Three and a half years of trusting God for everything. His, his, there was a there was a not there was a famine in the land, but it was from the drought. It hadn't rained, no dew for three and a half years. The Lord fed him at the brook. The ravens brought his food. He went to Zarephath, and the widow woman took care of him. And every day, that little bit of meal and a barrel, a little bit of oil and a cruise fed them for all of that time. And then God says, "I need you to go to Mount Carmel." Well, what was He going to say? He's going to say, "Yes, Lord." You've taken care of me. you fed me with birds bringing my food to me. How can I not do what you asked me to do? He had learned in three and a half years to simply trust. Listen, he challenged 950. 850. 850. But only the 450 prophets of Baal went. The 400 prophets of the groves never showed up. But he challenged all 850 and only one Elijah. But we know what happened, right? Because he did everything God told him to do, God set fire down when it was Elijah's time to build an altar and an offer. We learn through our difficulties and through hardships to simply trust God. Thank him for everything. Thirdly, thank him with everything. In this book of Psalm, the last Psalm 150, I want to read a verse to you there. Psalm 150 in the last verse, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Listen, don't hold back in praising him. Give him your praise. Take time to praise him daily. Listen, some people sing. Some people teach. Some are good, good with people. Some have good ideas. Some are leaders. Some are followers. Listen, find out what your talent is that God has given you and then use it to the best of your ability for his glory. Thank him with everything you have. Lindsay Stork, who is our missionary to Florida, to the uh, death ministry, uh, she was home uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday, and we went to breakfast with her yesterday morning, uh, and she was telling us, you, you know, she told us as a church when she was here that she has this sleep problem and she can't drive very far without having to stop. And, and she doesn't trust herself to go much distance without it. So things have to be kind of close for her. And the Lord has just worked so many things out in her life. And so her apartment that she has is right a block from the school where she teaches. One block. She can walk if she wants to. And then 
She just told us that she recently got a office. It, it, there's an office building, not like this building, but they're cubed off in these little cubes. And she got her a little cube because she has to deal with a lot of churches and a lot of people and, and a lot of families. And she did not want them knowing her personal address. I get that. That's pretty smart. So she has a P.O. box and she has this little cubicle. And so now she, she can meet people there and she can uh, witness the people there and talk to people there and, and do her business there in this little cubicle. Guess where it is? You just walk down her street and turn around the corner and pick her fit. And the Lord provided it right where she is. Yeah. And the hurricane that just went through, this town had built themselves up and had built a lot of the town up like high. And so when it surged in, it did not surge high enough to get into her apartment. Now she went to higher ground and stayed with someone else. But when she came back, there was no damage to her part. Do you think God is not in all of that kind of stuff taking care of things? Listen, all her stuff is so close and, and, and it's so easy to get to. You know, she took a, a, a group of the uh, of her death students to camp. You remember that? We raised money for her to help her go to camp. And I can't wait till she comes back and shares all of this with us. But she's now looking and she says, the Lord told me, Lindsay, Buy a bus. And so she said, I'm, I'm looking into buying a bus. I got a mechanic. We're going to bus over right now. They're going to tell me how I'm going to pay for this bus and how I'm going to take care of this bus. Good. And then we got a bus. So we don't have to rent all these other equipment and, and everything. Thousands of dollars to get people to camp because they pick kids up all over the whole state of Florida. And look, look, look all of it right here within arm's reach. So that, that's the way God is. That's how he takes care of us. He knows uh, what we have. And he takes what we have, the abilities we have. Okay, so Lindsay can't stay awake very long. Listen, when she was going to camp, her and another guy who also has sleep problems, they could only drive like an hour and they had to stop and take a nap. And then they got went to W Donuts and got them some coffee and drove a little while longer and had to stop and take a nap. But all these things being close to Lindsay's home is because God knows what her abilities are and what her abilities are. And, th and he's taking care of her. And guess what? She knows it. She knows it's God. That's the thing that we need to understand. What is it? What talent has God given you to do? Whatever it is, do it to the very best of your ability and thank God for it. Thank him for everything. Thank him with everything. Last, thank him through everything. I want to read a couple passages of scripture. This, this first one is my favorite in the word of God. Let me read it to you. Isaiah chapter 43. It says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Wow. Wow. No matter what I face, no matter what I go through, I will not go through it alone. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, that you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. 
And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. We're going to suffer things in life. But if I'm going to suffer, it's not going to be a murderer. It's not going to be an evildoer. It's, it's not going to be, what else did he say in there? A thief or a busybody in other men's matters. It'll be, I'll suffer for Jesus whatever comes. Whatever comes my way, whatever sufferings are there, I'll give God the glory and I will thank him for all that I go through. In the book of Daniel, when Daniel was promoted in the kingdom of Babylon under Darius the king, those who were Babylonians did not like an outsider coming in, the enemy, the captive enemy, coming in and being promoted to such a high place in the kingdom. So they said to themselves, we are going to do something to get Daniel off this, off where he is. He's taken our positions. And so they went and tried to find something against Daniel, and they could not. Listen to what they said. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 5, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Isn't that really the example that you and I would like to set for this world? Is that come after me if you want. Try and get me from the position I'm in. Try and get me from where I live. Try and change all the things around me. Try to get me involved in all this woke nonsense. And listen, I'm just going to stay true to the Lord. And I'm going to preach as long as God gives me breath to preach. As long as he calls me to preach. As long as he wants me to be here, I'll be here. And I'll preach it as strong as God intends for me to. I won't back down and I won't change it for anyone. But if I end up suffering, and they're going to find something to get me out of the pulpit and out of the church and away from preaching the gospel, may it only be what they could come up with about my relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. And throw me in jail. I'll go to jail. If that's what the Lord wants from me, I'll go to jail. And I'll thank God that he put me in a place where I continue to witness. Now, maybe I can witness. Maybe I get beat up. Maybe I get killed. I don't even know. But I know this. Wherever God places me, and when the Spirit of God moves me, I will be in tune with him so that I know what to do on every circumstance and every situation. And maybe that's going to be behind bars one of these days if the board tears. I don't know. But if it is, well, I don't want to be there. But I want to be strong like Daniel. And thank God through everything. You know, the devil accused Job of having a hedge built around him by God. You take that hedge down and he'll curse you to your face. Do you think God took the hedge down to prove to the devil that Job was a good man. God ain't under no obligation to prove anything to the devil. He was going to let Job know where Job stood with God. God already knew what kind of man he was. For in Job chapter 1 and verse 1, he says he's a perfect and upright man, one who eschews evil, and that means that he just stays away from him. So when the hedge came down and he lost his, his family and he lost his, his wealth and he lost his health and even his wife 
turn against them. Listen, his friends turn against them. They, 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 you got sin in your life. They couldn't understand how God could allow something like this to happen. But when it was all said and done, Job knew exactly where he stood with God. Thank him through everything. Giving thanks to God. Is something we need to become accustomed to every day, not just once a year. When was the last time you thanked God for something? Ask God tonight to help us learn to thank Him in everything, for everything, with everything, and through. Father, you are so, so good to us. Your mercy is everlasting. You're always working out that which is good to those that love you, serve you. Sometimes it doesn't seem so good, but we know that God's good. And all good and perfect gifts come. Lord, I pray that you would bless us. We pause tomorrow, so many across this country. Homes are going to gather around a big feast. Lord, are they going to give you the thanks and the praise? And when we witness to our families tomorrow, will we tell them if it wasn't for Jesus, none of this would mean anything? And would it help set a trend in our lives that we begin to thank you with all that we have every single day of our lives that have become just part of our, our life that we live? We thank you, Lord, for giving us opportunities to come to a place like this and worship you. And I pray you've done that tonight. I pray for those that are watching by Facebook that you would bless every one of these homes every person going through a struggle or a trial. Or if they don't know you as Savior, may this be the time that they become thankful for Calvary and for the blood shed on the cross. And Lord, they find forgiveness of their sins. Lord, may you give strength and courage and lift up the weak and the fallen. And Lord, I pray that you continue to bless this, this group here that you would help us, Lord, to be servants of yours to reach out to the world, in our community, in our town, on our jobs, in our homes, to those that are lost and need you. Thank you again, Lord, for giving us this word that we could use, and we use it for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You at home, thanks for watching from Facebook, and I trust you'll have a great day tomorrow on Thanksgiving, and uh, Lord willing, we will see you on Facebook.